Hi guys, it is a brand new year. Oh my gosh, we survived 2017 and we're into 2018 and I've got new bumper music. So that's kind of cool. Um, this video is gonna be called, Are You an Art Leader? And this is a topic that I've been thinking about for quite a while. Um, before I get going, I want to make a quick little announcement that we just launched a bunch of new classes at sbslearn.com. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and they're mostly live classes, but uh, my new class is actually going to feed into the subscription. And it's a, um, it's a details, a texture painting details class. And it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Haven't it's a, it's actually a class that I wanted to teach when I was in college, but we didn't really have a class like that um, where you just focus in on the details. Um, and you know, the problem that you get into a lot of times is you have teachers telling you, um, you know, work general to, to specific. Don't get into the details. You're getting into the details too soon. You're committing too soon to details and that's that's messing up and that's all true but eventually there when, when you get everything designed well when you get everything proportioned in the right place you got to start nailing down the details and the details are often what separate someone you know it's because we're talking about edge control and things like that um, the pr true professionals from those that are just kind of up and coming so I'm really excited about that um, I do have a limited number of seats in the live class um, and um, so anyway we just launched that today okay let's let's dive into this topic so the first question that I want to ask you while wow, you're so di diligently drawing I know you're starting a new drawing or you're working on something is do you believe that you can change someone's day by how you treat them um, in other words, you know, um, just through a casual smile, or maybe you help someone pick something up that they've dropped. Um, you know, maybe uh, you got two people are fighting over the same parking spot, and and one of you kind of just goes, "Wow, oh, you can have it," you know, like no big deal. Just, just do you do you think that you can actually? And I don't mean just change their day for a split second where they'll forget you because that's quite possible too but do you believe that by doing kind acts or by doing negative harmful acts that you can actually change someone's day and potentially even their life do you believe that you um, that depending on how you treat someone um, you could either prevent them or help them commit suicide maybe not help them but do you think you could prevent them someone who is suicidal by a kind act by taking you know something that you might think is normal behavior something where you don't really feel like you went out of your way a whole lot but just in through your actions and through your through your life I, I mean I'll answer that for myself I do believe that if I didn't I probably wouldn't be making this video um, I do believe that it's it's how we treat each other um, and, and I think that one flaw that humans typically have is that we um, we tend to remember the one negative act during the day and ignore you know the 10 or 20 positive interactions that we've had with people or maybe even 30 or 40 and we feel like the world is just oh the world is terrible because we had one person treat us negatively or something something happened and we're just like I hate people now um, and and we're all this I'm not saying that I'm any different if if you know I've had interactions where you know I was I was shopping once at the grocery store and and there was a person standing there looking in one of the um, freezer cases and clearly I walked up and needed to get into the same case and I so I was polite and I sat there and I waited and I waited and I waited for like a normal human cue you know how we give each other like normal like acknowledgement like oh you want to get in the same case go I have no idea what I want right now I'm browsing why don't you go ahead if you know do you know what you want you can go ahead I mean like that's like what I would think a normal person would do 
in this case, this person clearly was ignoring me. And so I, after about 10 seconds, I was like, well, maybe I'm just reach in there. And boy, did this person get offended. Excuse me, is what this person said. And, um, and I remember I'm, that bugged me all day. And in fact, it bugged me enough that I'm, that I remembered it to, I didn't have it in my notes, but it just like, boom, came to mind. So we're all like that. We all remember those negative things. But I do feel like, even though we ignore the positive sometimes, I feel like they still affect us in ways that we might not even be conscious of. And so my second question is, do you believe that art can change the world? Do you think that your art, my art, someone else's art, that it can have the same kinds of profound impact on people um, when they view it? And I do. I feel like, I feel like um, how you treat someone is art. Because to me, the, the definition that I like for art is when you create something that changes someone emotionally. And so to me, as humans, we use art in just the way we deal with people. Um, and, and so if you, if you have that kind of a definition of art, because art can be all kinds of different things. I mean, like a comedian on stage is, is art. Um, if they're good, right? And and they can change the way you think about things. They can in, they can do it through humor, but they can actually change. In some ways, they can change your politics. They might be able to to help you think about issues in a different way. Maybe not maybe not care about things as much or care more about things. Um, and so, uh, do you believe that art can change the world? Um, I and again, I believe you can change people for good or for bad depending on the type of art that you're making so I think that that it it puts a responsibility on us and it gives us sort of a it, when you think of it that way you you know I think you can think well what I'm putting out into the world and yeah, I put it out on social media I may share it in a gallery um, I may share it on my own personal website um, I might it might be printed in a book I mean there's it, whatever way your art is actually getting and being delivered to people um, can change them I believe for the for the good or the bad um, and since you're still watching this you I'm with, assuming that you probably do too or you want to see where this is going um, so my third question is uh, do you truly care about others um, I made I made a mission statement for myself many years ago and my mission statement was that um, I want to help the most amount of people through my art and that's one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel um, and it's one of the reasons why I became a teacher uh, it's one of the reasons why I teach online and um, it's one of the reasons why I um, volunteer to help people um, in lots of different ways. But um, but yeah, I mean, like that is that is something that I decided I want. I don't want. Um, part of the reason for this is I realize there's so much good art in the world. There's so much art that will be remembered. And when you think about all the artists that have ever lived all the artists that have ever you know spent their whole life creating art that have been forgotten about I have to think that the chances are that my art will be forgotten and that's okay what I think is more important than anything is that through my art I can help more people because that way it will never be forgotten because maybe the things that I share and the, and the help that I give other people will be passed down over and over and over and over again that's my hope and and so while my art might be forgotten, the effects of my life and, and, and what I've been doing hopefully won't be. And, and I think that's a good goal. Um, I, think it's, um, I think it's good to want to help other people. So in thinking about talking about this, I thought, you know, in some ways, um, I'm a leader. And I've never really, and I want to talk about what a leader is and why I think our industry needs more. Um, 
let's face it, we were never the cool kids, right? I mean, most of us. I'm, I know there's going to be a few of you, but most of us weren't the, the captain of the cheerleading squad or the captain of the football team. We were drawing, and we were the kid. Like, I was in school, I was the kid that, like, the cool kids would go, oh, you can draw, huh? Well, you know, like, draw me uh, Iron Maiden on my on my jean jacket. And, you know, or draw me a tattoo or something. And, you know, that was the only way that I got a glimpse into the cool kids club every now and then is because I could draw a little bit. And um, and I think a lot of us are that way where in as artists, a lot of us are quiet, um, more reserved. I was in school. I'm very talkative now and I'm very outgoing now, but I had to learn that. I was never always that way. I was I was very shy. I was bullied when I was in junior high and a little bit in high school. It started to grow out of it in high school, so I started getting some size. Um, but, but yeah, I was I was I was highly bullied, and, and I'm sure a lot of you guys were too. And um, so yeah, I mean, we weren't we weren't we don't think of ourselves as as leaders, but I think that the world needs more leaders, and I think that. The art community could use more leaders, and by that, I don't mean I don't mean someone that's seeking power or anything like that. Let me go through some of this this list here, and talk to you about a few other things um, that I've been thinking about. So, uh, what is a leader? To me, and I'm just going to go through this list of things that I think a leader is, and I'll bet that a lot of you are probably already leaders. But you don't think of yourself that way. Um, someone who's courageous, someone who is willing to buck ideas um, and be open to new ones. I see a lot of people online that seem to be really willing to follow uh, the the wind that's blowing currently, you know. And and they're afraid to stick st- stick their head up and or stick their hand up and say, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, but a leader is a leader doesn't just follow what is popular, um, and and a leader doesn't seek to become popular. Um, there have been leaders who have been popular and leaders who have seeking to be popular, but I, in general, to me, the best leaders don't seek popularity. So there are a lot of quote unquote leaders out there who, you know, and I can think of a lot of pol- politicians that um, are just not what I would not someone that I would want to hang out with not someone that I would want to be around and um, and and probably a lot of it is because of you know they're that person they're that they're that kid in school that was you know trying to I don't know the pe- the kids that bothered me in school a lot were the ones that tried to be popular without really earning it without doing anything you know it was it was uh, how many votes they could get because of their good looks and things like that, you know. Um, so, anyway, another another aspect of a good leader is someone that um, that doesn't fear, that doesn't have fear, that isn't ruled by fear, that isn't motivated by fear, that doesn't make decisions in their life based on fear. And one of those fears I can see in the art community is. Um, you know, looking at someone else's success or looking at someone else's, um, uh, maybe it's someone else's drawing that they put up and it's a really good drawing. And I think a natural feeling is to feel threatened when, when you're, when you're coming up and you're, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to fight for your attention and maybe somebody on Facebook is getting more attention. And, uh, and I used to have those feelings. I used to think, man, you know, I can't like this person's uh, this this person's art because then they might be getting more votes and they might be getting more popular. Meanwhile, where's my likes? You know, I think that's a self defeating attitude, and I think that um, that a good leader is happy for other people's success. So um, I have hopefully stricken that from my um, from my behavior um, and. You know, early on, that was that was more the case. But now, I really, truly am genuinely happy when I see other people succeeding. Um, and I and I think that also comes from the abundance mentality of understanding how how vast 
the world is and how much room there there is for more and more art um, and I think when when we live in a little bubble we, we become fearful we can become afraid because we don't really understand the sheer numbers of, of people there are on the earth that can gravitate to the things that you create and the things that I create and, and the people that are going to gravitate towards mine are going to be different than the people that gravitate that gravitate towards yours sometimes there'll be some crossover but but generally um, we will find our own audiences. Um, another attribute of a of a good leader, I think, is someone who um, is is able to let people fail, you know. And and so, <coughs> I can tell you a, a little experience right now that I've had, and I've had some, I've had plenty in in class. I didn't want to use an example from class because I know that a lot of my former students and current students um, watch this channel and I don't want to hit too close to home but I'll talk about my son <laughs> so my son my my youngest son is um, engaged I think it's too soon that's a whole nother issue but he and his fiance have a car and I feel like I felt like it was way too expensive for him now this my youngest son has not had a very good track record of listening to my advice, um, which I that he's a lot like me because I really didn't listen to my dad's advice on a lot of things. And having two boys ahead of him, hopefully I, I learned the lesson that, you know, like just because I know something to pretty much be true, I can't. I can't just deliver that information into another human's mind and have them accept it. It's like, we, we just can't do that. You know, even though I, I know that their car payment is going to be a huge burden and a huge ball and chain, um, I, I, I made a slight comment about it early on and immediately my son kind of did what I expected, which was to kind of shut me down. And so I, I just backed right off. And 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 um, it was funny, but that seed was planted, and and my wife kind of said, "This is you know we're learning, we're still learning about our kids, even though he's an adult now." But you know, she said, "Well, that's the way he is. You can't tell him something in the moment. You have to wait for him to be ready." And that, I think that's how we all are, right? I mean, um, when the student has arrived, the teacher will appear. Is the is the phrase that always comes back to my mind. So I never said anything about it and months and months went by. And then the other day he called me up and said, Hey, I'm wondering, will you still sell me that used car? I bought a used car for, for our family to kind of drive around in and it's a beater, but it's a good functional car. And he said, Hey, is that still, is the offer still up? Can I still buy that from you? Um, we're thinking about selling this and trying to get out of the payments and even though we'll be upside down and we'll have to come up with cash we're thinking that it would be smarter and so the cool thing is you know if you know they were kind of failing because they were making this huge payment and they're trying to save up money for their wedding and and for you know life after um, the wedding and paying for school and different things like that and um, and so yeah so success right like you I think a leader if you are to be a leader you have to realize at some point you cannot force people to do what you want them to do you have to let them learn like you learned you know we all learn through failure um, and uh, and and to me I get into arguments with my wife over this because she 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 doesn't believe that you should that people should fail as much that we should we can prevent a lot of their failures and I think you kind of have to let people fail more but anyway um, another thing on my list here is uh, isn't self-centered which we are all self-centered let's face it uh, we're all mostly probably self-centered but I think the best leaders have have become the least self-centered if there is such a thing like even though you know I mean like like let's face it when you come home from a long trip and you got to use the bathroom you're probably thinking about yourself using the bathroom you're probably not in the mode of going well let's see uh, I know we were all on a long trip 
um, I need to use the bathroom. Does anyone else want to go in there before me? Um, that's really how we should be. And yet we tend to fall into a natural mode of just kind of taking care of what we need. And, uh, but I think that, um, I think being more selfless is definitely a leadership quality that we should have. And I'll give you an example of this one. So, uh, I got, was asked to work on a project with a person and um, it was a collaboration. There wasn't going to be any money up front, but we were going to, to pitch this, uh, this idea, this project to a publisher and see if they wanted to publish it. Now this goes against kind of the, um, it goes against the norm, the normal way of, of publishing. So it's, it's weird. Like if you take my children's book class, all you'll hear a saying in there over and over. And if you go to an SCBWI conference, if you talk to anybody in the business, like, should I get an illustrator and like, should I write the story, find an illustrator or should I? You know, I'm, I'm talking mo mostly to authors, and you guys are probably mostly illustrators. But you've probably been approached by authors who are like, hey, will you illustrate my book and we'll pitch it to a publisher? Which is a huge no-no in the illustration business. Just kind of trying to bring you up to speed on that, if you're not familiar with that. Um, but when you when you have a published author and a published um, illustrator, then you can kind of sidestep that rule because you have track records and they can look up your accounts with other publishers and in in, they can look up your book scan sales and they can say, okay, well, these guys are legit and they've been working for these publishing houses and they'll look and, and, and evaluate the project as a whole, whereas most of the time they won't even look at it, which is a sad reality. So I had agreed to do this, this project and uh, I said, you know, I'm really busy, but, you know, and I could tell that this, this other person was really passionate about it and really wanted me to work on it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do a few sketches over the holidays. Well, the holidays came and I couldn't, I couldn't get them done. And uh, with, with the, the schedule and just everything that I had going on, plus my workload um, with freelance and with SVS and, and different things like that, my, my upcoming Comic-Con schedule, I'm committed to getting more characters out for that um my exercise schedule by the way diet's going great i'm back on schedule after christmas um and so i just thought um you know what i, I don't have time i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to beg out of this and so i sent an email saying you know i'm really sorry uh, i you know but i can't I just can't fit this in my schedule right now. Now, keep in mind, there was no money that changed hands. Um, this was a speculative project. And I sent this email saying, please, you know, forgive me, but I'm just not going to be able to do it this, this year. And and I waited to hear back, waited to hear back, nothing, nothing, nothing. Now, I am assuming, but... When you have back and forth, because I had a lot of back and forth with this person, emails flying back and forth during this thing. You know, can you, well, then can you get it done by this time? Well, can you get it done by that time? Well, you know, in the, in the initial stages, there were like five or six emails flying back and forth. And then when I say, I'm having a problem in my life, I cannot do this right now, and then I get silence. To me that, and I could be reading more into this, and it might not be there, but to me, it, it feels, I don't feel good from that. It doesn't give me a good feeling because it feels like, well, then I, and I know this is bad news. And, and you will have to give bad news to people. We all do. We all have to bear bad news to people like this. Um, but in that bad news, I'm saying, this is what I need in my life. And then I get silence. Um, and then I contacted the person again and they're like, yeah, I got your email. Uh, it's all right. Like whatever. It kind of reaffirmed that. Um, I just, I, to me, a leader doesn't do that. A leader understands like I get, I, and by the way, I get this a lot. I get, um, disappointed from, uh, people that I've, I've asked to teach for us. Um, I've been disappointed, um, where, where people have said, you know, I just can't do it this year. And, and we've been working on a class and they just 
they just fall through. And I pride myself in sending them a letter going, you know what? If this doesn't fit into your life right now, I totally understand. And we would never want to be a thorn in your side. Uh, we would never, we would never think that our project is more important than what you have going on in yours. Because I have no idea what's going on in your life. Um, and and so and to give you an example of someone who um, who has been a hero and a leader in my mind is is my my first rep, Joanne Chuna. And I hope she's watching this. Um, we haven't worked together in a long time, but she. I want, one of the, the her best attributes that I could ever um, praise her on is the fact that there were two or three times where I turned down projects that would have paid us a lot of money, um, and they, it's because they went against my beliefs. the The actual product I could not stand behind the product, um, and I did not want my name on it, and I didn't want to help promote the product. Um, and and one was, and I think I've talked about it, one. One of them was. Um, doing an ad um the halloween ads for um for cores for beer and the reason for that was my style is a children's book style that's what i do and i had just come off of doing a the the children's promotion for uh m&m mars for the halloween promotions for all the stores in the u.s and um and i'm pretty sure that they saw that and wanted something fun like that and I just thought you know what beer and fun equals driving I, I don't want to help sell to the younger crowd I don't want to help help selling beer um, and so I man I when when she came with this job I was like this is this is like gonna be really big money and and those to, to give you an example the m and Mars job was like forty thousand dollars so the the um, the beer one, I mean, advertising jobs pay the best. It probably would have paid five figures somewhere in there, somewhere, um, and would have been a really welcome uh, chunk of money. But you know, I and I and I thought that she was going to be mad because this is her. You know, she was getting twenty five percent. So this is like, you know, she gets a dream job coming in. She gives it to me, and of course I'm going to take it. And then I say, you know what, Joanne. And she she already knew she she knew she she because we she knew me and and she's like you know what that doesn't surprise me at all and I don't want you to worry about it at all she's like I would rather have you happy as an illustrator than to take something that you don't believe in and be upset with it and I don't want any job to ever come in front of our relationship and man I learned so much that day um, and about integrity. Um, about how to treat someone else when when treating them the right way is not necessarily good for you um, and so to as a leader we really have to work on not being um, self-centered and there's other aspects like courage um, you know and um, being courageous uh, I don't really have a good story for that but uh, I, I as <laughs> As an art leader, I don't think we have to, you know, go out with our swords and, and conquer villages. But we do have to be courageous um, when opportunities present themselves. I, I gave a talk once um, in front of the SCBWI because I was, or sorry, not the SCBWI, the um, um, the California Teachers Association because I was their, their inducted illustrator for a year, or for two years actually. And... Um, they they wanted me to come up on stage and give us a, a speech in front of a thousand people a thousand people a th like a thousand you know you can say you have a thousand followers on Facebook or you have a thousand followers on Instagram or something and you're like well it's a thousand when you see a thousand people sitting in front of you I mean you, you can hardly see to the back of the room that there's like mist in the air you know and um, and I was petrified to, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to trip. I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to say what I want to say. Um, and, uh, but I, I got it out and it was, it was successful. And, but it took courage to do that. I don't know. I don't know if that's the kind of courage that we're talking about. Um, another one I think is uh, a leader is positive. Uh, I don't know too many leaders 
who are good leaders who are negative people. And so, like, I know that it's often popular in the artist community to be somewhat negative and angsty and, and you know, um, you know, and, and, but, man, I mean, like, people don't gravitate towards negativity. And, and negativity, if you think about it, I've always felt this way. It takes more energy to be negative than positive. Because when you're positive, when you're doing good things, people... I mean, that's what our society values. So people will compliment you on your whatever it is that you did that was positive. You don't get that kind of affirmation from people when you do negative things, or at least you get it from other negative people. And so it's like this self-loathing um, kind of a cesspool of, of, of people that kind of are all dragging each other down. And then one thing that I have noticed with with negative groups is they tend to try to one up each other on their negativity, which becomes a huge drain as well because you know your the bad things that are going on in your life don't stack up next to the the next person's bad things. And so rather than getting comforted, you often get, well, you think your life's bad, look at mine and look at this thing. and then it's like this endless spiral. and so you have to like out negative each other in order to get any attention. I've seen that because I had a kid who was in one of those groups and I used to read his Facebook. Um, there's, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating the comments I'm going to get. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be depressed because there's clinical depression or I'm not saying you shouldn't be depressed because there's definite reasons to be depressed. I think we've all gone through depression at different times. Um, when I've been depressed a few times, the few, and I've been lucky. I mean, I, like I'm not depressed very often, but when I am, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, I don't feel like drawing. I don't want to do anything. Um, and I've never had clinical depression, so I'm not trying to equate myself with someone um, who is suffering some real serious depression. I've never been suicidal. Um, and um, so I don't understand. I, I'm not going to pretend like I understand. And I'm definitely not one of those people that's going to say, well, snap out of it. What I am saying is if you find yourself wanting to belong to a group and you have options and you have choices and you're like, well, there's a bunch of negative people and there's a bunch of positive people, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the negative people. If it's a choice, you know, slap yourself and don't do it because it's just going to drag you down. Um, Okay, so that's uh, positive. Uh, another one, another attribute I think of a leader is someone that is appreciative, that has a lot of gratitude, um, who understands um, understands that they have more to be grateful for uh, than they have to be upset at. Um, everybody has probably had a bad boss. Um, you know what I mean? A, a boss, just because they're your boss doesn't mean they're a leader, right? You can have a boss that's not a leader. Um, and we've all had bad bosses before. And there's things that we just wish we could tell our boss, but we know we probably wouldn't still have a job if we did. And so we kind of just suck it up and we, we, we um, you know, we complain about it, right? But I think that a leader is someone who, even though they have, might have position, uh, of authority, they might have a you know like, like teachers, right? Teachers are, teachers are in positions of authority. Some of them are leaders. Some of them are not leaders. Um, and uh, so I think that um, having gratitude for what you have, I'm I'm always surprised at people that have achieved a lot in their life, um, who may have great financial reward and are still negative and are still complaining about what they don't have. Um, it, it, it just always surprises me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because, you know, I came from, I, I came from a lower middle class family who kind of moved, not upper middle class, but moved a little bit higher as I was going through high school. Um, and maybe it's because I went through a financial meltdown um, in 2008, 9, and 10, where I lost my house and had my truck repossessed. And, you know, my wife and son, we, we were worried that we, we couldn't pay for all their medical bills. We couldn't pay for all their um, their um, medications that they needed. 
um, for their autoimmune diseases. I mean, like, and I was super depressed at that time. So at that time, I understood depression uh, when I was trying to claw my way back out of that. But I do know of a teacher who has achieved an amazing amount of success in, I don't want to say uh, what area, so I have to be a little bit cryptic about this, but I do know a teacher who in their field achieved a lot of worldwide recognition and who is currently being paid quite a bit of money for that worldwide recognition and who has a full-time teaching position at a university um, and who went after another teacher, another new teacher, um, because that teacher was supposedly stealing the, the material that they were teaching, which is ridiculous because everything we teach in art or any subject has a lot of overlap. And I'm not talking about specific slides or examples like that. I'm talking about concepts, simple concepts. And I know this person, I know this teacher, and from my run-ins, I they have always puzzled me as to how this person can be the way they are, upset at the world, and yet have so much monetary gain, so much fame. And I think, what more does it take? What more do you need? to feel good about yourself because obviously when you pick on other people when you try to tear someone else down that means that there's something that's not being fed inside and I, and I think well what is it what what more do you need from this world um, and, it, and it's sad it really is sad and the good news was this this teacher got shut down by the by the um, chairman uh, when it when it became more of a problem um, so yeah uh, having gratitude for the things that you have uh, is huge and um, it will make your life go so much better than if you find yourself again getting in with a group of people who find a reason to complain about everything there's always something one of the things I I try to think of I actually put this out on Facebook once because I saw a lot of ingratitude going on and this was many years ago and I put it out on Facebook and I said, would you rather um, live today, earning what you earn today, having what you have today, basically your life today, or would you rather live 150 years ago and have the equivalent of earning 10 times what you earn now, or have 10 times the bank account, 10 times the money? 10 times the monthly paycheck. So for someone making $50,000 a year, they'd be making $500,000 a year back then, right? 150 years ago. But that means that you would have to give up cars, airplanes, uh, furnaces like we know them today, air conditioning. You'd have to give up modern medicine. You'd have to give up the internet. You'd have to give up movies electricity uh, yeah I mean like go look at what life was like 150 years ago would you rather live then and be wealthy or live today with what you have and I on the on the Facebook post a lot of people weighed in and it was almost like 50 50 he said they would want to go back I would bet you money that out of the 50 percent that said they'd want to go back they wouldn't last a week that's just my guess um, I certainly wouldn't want to go back so that tells me that a lot of the people that chose to stay where they are currently and a lot of them that chose to stay are not rich at all by any means. It did not break down economic lines at all. I saw a lot of my students, poor students who were like, I would never want to go back and live 150 years ago. Um, so that, that tells me that um, that there's a lot of people that have gratitude and a lot of people that don't have gratitude because uh, I think I don't know just personally I think if you want to go back if it's if you're not just in love with living like that because I mean I I get it there's that, that brings up a whole nother can of worms like there's there's the idea of a simpler life 
and I there's a lot of things that I would love about a simpler life so I understand that but come on I mean movies games vacations I don't know um, okay another aspect of a leader fair someone who's fair someone who doesn't play favorites someone who makes the hard decisions uh, for fairness sake even when they might not want to um, someone who is uh, solution oriented instead of uh, you know there's a problem and there's just a problem here and you guys are gonna have to fix this because there's a problem and you know a, a, a good leader is hmm there's a problem here I wonder how we can fix this um, gathers their people together and and ask for help and says how can what do you think how can we fix this you know a lot of times when when we were working on in the early days uh, of SVS like you know four or five years ago uh, I would ask Jake we got this problem how would how, how would you solve it hey he, a lot of times he would say ask the Facebook group you know put it out on Facebook ask ask your class ask you know ask you know re approach the hive mind and and uh, and draw on their power you know don't we don't have to solve all these 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 problems ourselves um, another one is honest just just being honest I'm always surprised at how many people will get themselves into more trouble by lying about something you know if you make a mistake um, we all make mistakes this is this is gonna sound simple but it's isn't it surprising and you see this in in the media too you see you see people either in in a political office or you see people um, in a position of power and and sometimes they'll instead of owning up to the thing that they're being accused of or that has been proven they'll make excuses and try to deflect and and things like that and a good leader takes it square on the nose and says you know what I did this I feel bad about it I I don't that's not me anymore I'm not gonna do that I've learned from it I'm gonna grow from it and takes their lumps and sometimes that can cost you your job sometimes that can cost you your position but a good leader understands that that's really the only choice that you have um, a good leader and another thing on on honesty is um, is understanding to what level of honesty you need to give someone and I don't really have a good way of putting this into words simply but other than to give you the example of when I give a critique um, I critique people uh, on our forums all the time and in our classes and at school and uh, when I look at their work I try to assess where they are in their journey their artistic journey and also where they are emotionally and I've learned because I've had I've had people crying in my and I'm not like a harsh critic at all I um, and I'll, if anything I will err on not being I in my own opinion my own estimation I think I err on not being hard enough I've had people tell me that I've had people tell me after someone's gone away crying like no they really needed to hear that that was really good and you could have gone a lot further um, so but in, but in being honest like the, the one of the hard things with with like Facebook art groups is when you're when you're amongst all your peers and this happens with me too you know like if I get with um, people that are doing professional uh, children's book work you know and they see my book no one really gives a strong critique unless you really ask for it you know like really hit me you know give me a good punch in the gut um, we 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 tend to kind of not want that and so you know in in these groups on Facebook a lot of times you just you'll just see the same comment over and over oh, great job it looks great I love it I love it and meanwhile it it has a lot of problems and problems that all these people that are saying how good it is can easily see but they they haven't really been invited to be honest you know so I think a good leader is someone who maybe asks and says hey if do you want to know what I think you know and then is willing to, to actually tell that person but not to a point where they're 
in, they're going over the line and really destroying this person. Um, and for me, I use the rule of like three to five things. Whereas like, let, let's say, let's say in order to make a really good children's book illustration, there's a checklist of a hundred things that you should have um, uh, included. You know, like, like a hundred, some would be art principles, some would be content, um, some some might be stylistic things, but in general for the market that they're going for, there's a list of about 50 or 100 things that they could check. And let's say someone turns in something that I'm going to critique and it's missing, like maybe it's got like five boxes checked, you know, but it's missing like 95. I mean, I could write them a critique or I could give them a critique where I go over and I go, now, this piece, you know, you need to completely start over because nothing's working. And I'm being honest. And in, in, in according to my knowledge, I realize that their best chance is to start over. But I also know that that pure uh, saturated honesty could drive them to just completely quitting art. Is that what I want? Is that my goal? No. As if I'm trying to be a leader, then my goal is to inspire them. My goal is to try to help them the best that I can. And to me, the best way to do that is to give them two, three, four, five things that they can take away along with some compliments, which is sometimes hard, um, so that they feel like, okay, well, I'm not, I know that I'm not up here, you know, I know that I'm down somewhere, but I can take this and, and, and it'll give me some definite things to work on. Whereas, you know, you, you can go too far. Like I, you know, and I like to play that game. Like, is it ever okay to tell a lie? Well, you know, if you're, if you're at your mother-in-law's for uh, dinner and there's something that you really hate, you know, I mean, does it do anybody good to go, I hate this. I really hate it. Like, I never want to have this again. I don't ever want to like it. I, do you have, can I wash my, can I get up and, and spit it out? I, this is, this is horrible. I mean, that's honest, right? Um, so to be a leader, I think you have to look beyond and understand what you're trying to accomplish um, when it comes to pure, unadulterated honesty. Uh, another one is integrity. Kind of touched on that before. Um, to me, a lot of integrity is basically doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and, you know, you could say on that project that you talked about earlier, you said you were going to do, you were going to follow through and you were going to do this project with this person and then you didn't do it. Yes. And I feel horrible about that. Um, there are some times where things creep up. Um, I took on more responsibilities on some of my um, paid gigs, the things that I have to do. Um, and as a result, those were things that I didn't know about when I agreed to do um, the, uh, the project after having realized that I couldn't get away from some of these responsibilities, um, I had to just say, you know what, I, like, in scheduling my life, I have to put, I have to prioritize, and this one is the one that's going to get kicked out. Um, so sometimes that will happen. Um, and that person might think that I don't, that I have a lower integrity because, because of it. And if they do, I'm fine with that. I would rather have them tell me that than to just disappear. Um, so another one, I don't really know what to call this. I put it under integrity, but it probably doesn't belong there. Maybe some of you guys have some ideas of what this would be, be called, but it would, it would, it's the idea that you are not, um, uh, that you're never above the work that your employees are to do like that, that, that you're not, um, that you're too good for the work that you're asking someone else to do. Um, I always feel like a good leader, a good boss, should always be willing to roll up their sleeves and get in the trenches with their employees. Um, I had a few, when I worked at McDonald's as a kid, I remember I had a couple of bosses who felt that way, and they were like, when they would get busy, they would be right in there with us, just working as hard as us. And I, I remember making a comment to one of them, like, "Wow, you, you know, you don't have to be here," and, and he's like, "Yeah, I do," and the reason I do is I want you guys to know that I'm here for you. And man, that went so far with me. Uh, and I had another boss, the, the main boss, who who would never, in, in a million years, he was too good for flipping a burger on the grill, and uh, never saw him do that. And I and I lost. I just didn't have as much respect for him as the other guy. Um, 
So, and that's about it. I, you know, another thing that I thought I might mention is, you know, and I think I touched on this earlier, you know, like you, as a leader, we don't, we don't set out, um, we don't set out to become a leader. Like, I don't think, I don't think you're laying around as a kid uh, when you're growing up and you go, you know, I want to be a leader. I want to be uh, a leader in the art industry or, you know, someone that people look up to. Yeah, that's what I want to be. I want to be someone that people admire and someone that people look up to. No, like those people are not admired and they're not looked up to. Um, they're forgotten about. And we knew a lot of them in high school. Um, so, um, you know, like recently I got um, invited to be on the advisory board for the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. And it, it's a great honor for me. Um, I'm not getting paid for it. it. It is a volunteer thing, and there's not many hours involved. Um, I'm assuming that they asked me to do this um, a lot because of my visibility online, maybe this, maybe even this channel. Um, but um, it is, it, it's another way for me to fulfill that mission statement of helping the most amount of people um, with their art. And it's something that I, I looked at the requirements, I looked at what I would need to do and the amount of time that I would need to give them, and I thought, you know what, I can work this in. I can do this. Um, I never, when I was in school, in art school, I never thought, you know, someday I want to be on an advisory board. I think that um, leaders should be reluctant. I think that if you're reluctant to be a leader, that's a good thing. But I think that through your example and through the way you live your life, you can become a leader and I would encourage you to do so because I think like I said from in the beginning of this video I think the world needs us I think that the world is starving for people to kind of um, inspire them and show them um, their humanity um, and and show them uh, love and all the good the attributes that we um, that we value and as artists like I, I've talked about this before too that that um, uh, everything that people want, everything that people aspire to have, if you think about it, if you if you drill down and you think about like at any luxury item, any recreation item, any um, any beautiful object, uh, that's vague, um, any entertainment, like books, games, movies, everything that you want, and I'm not talking about like I'm not talking about like uh, you know, like getting your taxes done or something like that. But like the things, the luxury items, the things you aspire to have, the things you wish for, have all been touched by the hand of an artist. If you think about it, the food that you eat, right? When you go out to eat at a fancy restaurant, um, the culinary arts, everything that we want, that we aspire to have has been touched by the hand of an artist. So it's really important for us. Um, and uh, I think that a lot of you either are already leaders or are, could probably become a leader without changing a whole lot in your life. Anyway, some things that I was thinking about um, over the holidays and um, I don't have a good sign off, but maybe I'll go back to because I've been missing the, the whole um, don't subscribe. I had somebody tell me the other day, you know, you're not really inviting people to subscribe. Your channel can't grow you have to remind people to subscribe. So I was, last year, the year before last, I was saying, um, don't subscribe unless you want to see more videos like this. So maybe I'll go back to that, I like that one. See you on the next one.